everyone welcome to my video tutorial on how to set up Cubase Pro 9.5 with Allen and Heat QNU24 I'm gonna try to make this like a two part tutorial I'm gonna do English first and then in Spanish it's gonna be a long tutorial bear with me my accent is there so please help me out in here so just to relax a little bit myself or just to tell you a little bit myself uh i have been making music for a lot of years since 19 1989 and i have been in the reggaeton industry with the best of the best artists and i took a break and you know went to the military in 1999 and I came back making music back again when I retired from the military in 2013. Well, this two-part video tutorial is gonna be about how you set up USB USB streaming, and I'm sorry my accent, USB streaming uh, using Cubase Pro 9.5 uh, with Allen and Heat QU24. So let's get to it. First of all, if you got any questions, you need to go to their website on Cubase Pro, uh, Cubase, Stainbird.net, and, uh, and AlanandHeat.com. And I found uh, a lot of good information there, but at the same time, I also had to watch other people doing tutorials. And some of them sound okay, and some of them, it just kind of don't make sense. So everything you see in YouTube, don't think is the right way to do it but sometimes a lot of people give you some help you know they're really expert and i give kudos for that because sharing is caring okay so in this english part tutorial that i'm gonna make first of all i had to pull out the notes from uh, alan and he and how to set up uh you know and you don't control how to set up your faders and all that kind of stuff so your faders move automatically and everything it's nothing different than Logi Pro X, just so then that the USB streaming and Logi Pro X is more easy than Cubase Pro, but it's not difficult US uh, Cubase Pro. So I had to come down here. You already know if you set up Logi Pro X, you already know that Cubase is gonna be kind of like the same thing. So in Steinberg Cubase, it's explained you here. You know, you select the Mackie Control Protocol in the Dog Control Panel and launch Cubase. Open Devices Setup and Device Setup window. Create a Mackie Control Device for each block or eight MIDI street present on the mixer and assign the corresponding MIDI ports. Note that the top most the top most device in the left hand side list represent the rightmost channel. The following example is meaning that you got 16 MIDI strips, okay? You click at and advise and, uh, and select Mackie Control. So it's kind of like Logi Pro X, you know, that you go, well, let, let's go to Logi Pro X and you will see what I'm talking about. So like that, you get an idea also how to set up in Cubase because the idea is Cubase. I become pretty much really good in Logi Pro X. So, in Cubase, I want to become expert too, and I'm going to set it up for you, the Cubase also. So, just bear with me here, so like that you understand what I try to do, so you get, you know, ahead of the game on everything. This is a beat that I make, you know, so before I even go to the beat, this is the way you set up the control surfaces on, uh, on Logi Pro, okay? You got four instances of... Uh, on Mackie control, okay? Dog control one, dog control two, dog control three, and dog control four. For some reason, when you restart your computer and you have to set it up again, they're actually gonna have this little check mark in there. So that's mean you have to go back in here and put dog control one, and dog control one, and then dog control two, and dog control two, and so and so remember it's it's a uh, eight channel per each bank so in order to get this in logic pro x you already know you have to go to install and then you go to uh mackie control logic control let me find it here because i'm kind of a little bit older than you guys so 
Okay, Maki design. There will be Maki design, Maki control, Logi control. Then you add it, and of course, it's gonna be here. You know, you be adding each one of them, and you're gonna be putting dot control one, dot control two, dot control three, and dot control four. Well, for the QU24, it's four sets, you know, of those banks A, 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 and A. All right. So then you go to window and you go to open MIDI environment and then you go to click port. And then, of course, you're going to create a monitor. Monitor you created here on this part here where you got monitor. Of course, you add the monitor you don't have and then you connect the four cables control MIDI one. Con do control MIDI 2 and do control MIDI 3 and do control MIDI 4 that's it and then of course you save it boom and it's done and then you got music right so I'm gonna put the whole B because I'll be wasting my time in here so that's that's how you set it up in Logi Pro X so now let's go to Cubase okay Cubase it, it was difficult for me in the beginning because you had to select you know, it's kind of like backwards for some reason where you add the do control, you have to select do control MIDI 2 as the input and output. And, you know, you have to set up your Mac control and then the one, just only two instantly, you got like a 16 channels. So I was like, man, this is kind of difficult because I tried to do it in Cubase and it wasn't working the right way for me. But also I tried to you know, read everything that I read in here that I'm, I'm going to go into detail into it. You have to do your own research. But uh, I went and uh, watched another video tutorial from a good, a good guy. Actually, it's in German. It's, the name is uh, uh, Cuba Enrichment. Well, Thomas Milonas. Thomas Milonas. And that was a really good tutorial. Really good tutorial. Tom's like, of course. Uh, it's in German, so I speak in uh, Spanish and English, okay? So I tried to compare what he did to try to set up Cubase with Alan and he QU24, right? He got a 16 channel. I got a 24 channel. So, of course, these notes that I just told you, they're dated from uh, August 2016, okay? But... Uh, you found this, you found this information actually on uh, on the Allen and his support and explain, you know, you put here the control and QU series the MIDI control, okay? And of course explain you for all of them. That's the notes that I just showed you right now, okay? So kudos to Alan and he, uh, uh, Alan and he but uh, I sent an email to them and uh, they didn't know Actually, they, they don't they don't have the software Cubase to test it with Alan and he. So I'm doing it for them. So say, this same video that you're watching right now, I'm sending it to them so like that they can come out with better ways to improve the system between Alan and he and Cubase Pro because I'll be using a lot. I'm gonna start using a lot of the do, or DAWs or digital audio workstation to work. So now let's get to the kudos of Cubase. So this is the way it worked for me. Of course, you you know wait until Cubase open. Really nice software, actually. Really nice. A very good price too. Really good price too. I don't use Pro Tools. Pro Tools is like overrated. Five hundred dollars a month. I mean, not a month, a year. Five hundred dollars a year for a subscription, please. You know, not every musician make a lot of money, but at least I'm blessed and I'm be able to buy every DAW. You know, so. Let's get to it. So when you open Cubase, okay, you, the way I watched the guy who did it, it was in, in a certain way. So I just did a empty project, just a complete empty project. I click create. Okay. And then on the project, of course, the way I had to set it up, it was on the studio and I had to go to a studio setup okay and the studio setup you're gonna have to create four instance on Mac control okay so this is this is the weird thing about it 
and let me do it here real quick so like that you get an idea let me take out this Mackie control so like that you understand this is your plus and minus okay so let me take it off 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 okay so now this is the way I had to figure it out figure it out okay so I had to add a instant or Mackie control and I will have one Mackie control in there so you know it's not like logic pro x that you pull maki control and then be dot control one so the, here is backward you have to set up maki control and then in the maki control you have to pull four okay and then you create another instance maki control apply maki control two it will be three okay it's backwards yeah i don't know why so then you create another instance, Maki control, apply, number three will be number two. Okay. Then you create another one, Maki control, apply, and number four will be number one. Okay. So once you've done that, okay, you click apply and you go okay then you click okay oh make sure before the anything that uh the you actually are looking don't get confused with this one down here okay because a lot i don't know for some reason you see all this and you're gonna be crazy on the q q u 24 audio no and don't mess with the bst system link either Okay, this is just to the purpose to, for the faders to move and you mute and you select uh, solo and all that. Okay, so okay, let's go back to it. So, Mackie control, we got Mackie control is Mackie control MIDI 4, Mackie control 2, dot control MIDI 3, and Mackie control 3, dot control MIDI 2, Mackie control four do control midi one i just don't want to get confused really late at night and uh, i try to make this not painful i know it's painful for you guys for me it's more painful because i was all day trying to figure out this out so once you do that then you right click and you add an audio track then when you create the audio track you're gonna create 24 channels of mono mono channels okay no stereo but mono okay and then on the track name you can pull i guess whatever you like but i pull allen and heat okay h n uh, a and h uh qu24 okay and then well i ain't gonna pull all that uh, like that just channel zero one okay so i'm creating 24 channels of mono or mono or mono uh channels okay i add the tracking to it and how you see here on my left side i create 24 channels of mono right and then now what i need to do is i go back to studio and i go i either press f4 or audio connections okay then in audio connections this is was the part that the jeremy guy was explaining for 60 channels so we're going to do it for 24 channels and remember don't forget you got three channels this is stereo but on the inputs you're going to click add you well first of all this channel here this one in here you're going to erase it right click remove bus stereo in okay yeah, it's going to ask you, but stereo in is used for your project. Delete anyway. Yes, delete it. Okay. And then you're going to add. Kind of like the same thing that you did on the on the mixer itself. Well, on the screen, the other screen. Like you see. So we're going to create 24 channels. Okay. Mono. Okay. Same, same process. Okay. Bear with me. I know you excited for this to work, but... I had to do it many, many times, okay? And now I got it kind of close to it. So, H&E for Alan and he, 
QU24, okay, channel one, and I add those 24 bosses, boom. You got 24 channels in there, okay? So now that you got these 24 channels in there, now you're gonna create the three stereo, okay? Because of course, this uh, mixer got 24 channels, a mono and then three stereos, okay? So let's create those three channels and then it's gonna be stereo and then you're gonna do A and H, of course, for enemy here again. And uh, you're gonna put Q, well, this is just me. I like everything square away. Since I was in the military, you know how it is. So I didn't hit QU24, and of course you see it finishing 24. Okay, so we channel 25, CH 25-26, okay? And then you add that bus. It's gonna create those three channels. You see how it created those three channels there? So don't don't panic. It's gonna show like 25, 26, 25, 27, 25, 28. So you go here. Those are good. Double click in there. So it'd be 27. And then 28. Okay. 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, okay? Once you've done that, then you come to outputs, okay? You come to outputs, and then in outputs, you can either change the stereo, the stereo, you have to change it because it actually is on uh, channel 25 and 26 and you know that's, that's the stereo out. So I use channel 31 and channel 32, okay? And then after you done that here on a stereo out, you can rename it so like that you know what it is, okay? And then H&E stereo output. Stereo or stereo output, yeah, stereo output or stereo out, okay? Once you've done that, okay, you click out of this, okay? Now this is the other part you have to go. You select channel one. Then you see this part here say no bus. That will be channel one, okay? Then you go to channel two, channel two. You have to assign it for some reason. That's the way it worked for me, actually. It worked for the German guy too and the 16 channels. So for me, it's working for the 24 channel. I had to do a little more reading on the manual, but also I had to see what he was doing, okay? Channel six. Channel seven, channel A, and so and so. Let me go all the way. Channel nine, channel ten, channel eleven. Ooh, uh, oh, oh, no, my bad, my bad. No, 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 no. What I'm doing? I don't need this. Let me take this out. I don't need this. Uh, channel 12, let me make sure channel 11, channel 12, channel 13, yeah, I don't know, it's a little more longer for me, uh, doing it <laughs> with Cubase than actually Logi Pro, Logi Pro is a little bit more simpler when it comes to setting up that. But of course, a lot of people say that Cubase is more a more powerful software than Logic. But for me, the idea is know which one, which DAW or Digital Audio Workstation is more powerful. For me, it's more about if a client come to the studio and they come with a project in Logic Pro X, I, I use Logic Pro X, come with Cubase Pro, or, I mean, have a project in that kind of DAW. Okay, cool, you know, 
and so and so. But uh, soon I'll be getting Ableton and FL Studio. I already got it. And soon it's gonna be the alpha version of uh, of FL Studio that I got it here somewhere too, and I'm testing it. Okay, and uh, let me finish this because I really want to get to the kudos of this. 22, 23, and like everything, you have to double check that you do it right, okay? So bear with me. So let's go back again from top to bottom or bottom to top, however you want to. Channel one, channel two, channel three, channel four, channel five, Okay, so now that you there, I'm gonna bring the mixer in here. Okay, so you see in this mixer, you're gonna have like about 24 channels in there. Of course, I'm in channel uh, channel two, recording my recording my voice, and of course, if you know uh, for the QU driver, you be recording the QU driver with the Allen and Hill, the channels stereo is 17 and 18, but don't worry about that. But this is where you got your channel one all the way to 24. So now when I move the mixer, let me go back to the double layer. You hear the mixer in there when I click the, the two button for the layer for the USB streaming. Now my fader are moving, okay? I don't know if you can hear it there. Maybe yes, maybe no, okay? So, let me put it back to zero decibel in here. But it doesn't matter. So, the most important thing is that uh, actually, if you don't set up those four dog control and you only set up two, your mutes, it won't work. You see how it's mute in there? I got all the mutes in there. Right, and then I got my solo, okay? When I press the P, the P, A, F, L, that that's your, pretty much your solo, okay? So, actually, it worked pretty good like that, you know? And the fader, the thing about the fader is just the faders and the mixer itself physically, you have to select the green button, the select, for each fader before you move it because if you try to move the faders and you haven't selected is is, is, is you might break the fader for something you know you, you, I don't want you to break the fader you know pretty much you have to select that channel select it first on this I'm talking in the mixer mixer itself okay physically okay because you move the fader and you haven't select that fader it's gonna be kind of hard first but then you're gonna be able to move it, okay? It's not like Logi Pro, you're gonna get scared a little bit about it. It's not like Logi Pro X that uh, you got all the faders in there and you can move it no matter which one you have selected, okay? So pretty much that's it for Cubase Pro when you set it up uh, for those automatic faders, okay? So if you got any questions, okay, let me know and I can help you out. So now I'm gonna do my version in Spanish, okay? So because I'm pretty much done setting up the faders and the mute and all that. So just to go back into it, okay? Let's do it again, but we're gonna do it in Spanish now, okay? I ain't gonna save the project, okay? Don't save. Okay, mi gente, ¿cómo estamos? Aquí le habla DJ Chepo de DJ Chepo Music en Facebook o en Instagram. Aquí le estoy hablando para dejarles saber cómo funciona Cubase Pro con, con Alan and He QU24 o Alan and He QU24, ¿ok? So, a lo mejor voy a mezclar algunas palabras en inglés, pero espero que entiendan un poquito. So, 
Lo mismo que estaba explicando en inglés, lo voy a explicar en español en lo mejor que yo pueda. ¿Ok? So, por favor, no se apuren. So, si has trabajado con Logi Pro X anteriormente y Alan en Heat uh, QU24, pues lo mismo, uh, más o menos lo mismo tú tienes que hacer cuando tú estás testeando Logi Pro X para poder usar el USB streaming de, de Alan en Heat QU24, ¿ok? So, lo mismo que estaba explicando. Vamos, vamos a suponer Logi Pro X es, es un poquito más fácil que Alan en Heat, no, I mean, que Cubase Pro, ¿ok? So, deja que mi Logi Pro X uh, abra. Ok, ahí abrió. Ahí escucharon los faders. No sé si los escucharon ahí. So, en Logi Pro X, cuando uno setea el Do Control para que se puedan mover los faders, ok. Uno tiene que venir aquí. Y la... Al setup, ok. Y tú vas a crear cuatro Maki Control, ok. Esos Maki Control están aquí en el área donde está instalación o install, ¿ok? Y bajas hasta donde está el Maki, Maki Design, Maki Control, Logic Control, ¿ok? Y ahí uno lo añade, ¿ok? Después no le des scan, lo añades, porque cuando uno lo añade, te va a aparecer aquí, ¿ok? Entonces... Lo que pasa es lo siguiente, cuando después que tú los añades y le pones a cada uno, porque tienes que crear cuatro, ¿ok? Y el primero pues es do control one, ¿ok? Y después do control one. Tiene que serlo en el output port, en el input port, ¿ok? Entrada, en, salida y entrada, ¿ok? Entonces aquí creas uno. Crear el número 2, crear el número 3, crear el número 4. Si tú ves esta marquita aquí como el question mark, quiere decir que no, que, que no lo seteaste bien. So, usualmente cuando yo apago la computadora después de un día bien cansado de trabajar en el estudio, porque yo no la dejo durmiendo, porque si la dejas durmiendo, el hard drive se queda pegado en el sleep mode y no es bueno. Yo mejor la apago y al otro día cuando voy a abrir el estudio, la prendo, pues vas a tener un, esos mismos, esas mismas uh, exclamaciones, uh, marks ahí. Y entonces pues tú tienes que ir a cada uno y poner do control one y do control two y do control three y do control four, ¿ok? Cuando terminas de hacer eso, vas al open MIDI environment o abrir el, environment, el, el ambiente MIDI, ¿ok? Abrir el ambiente MIDI. Entonces aquí vas al lado donde está uh, layers en español. No me acuerdo muy bien cómo se dice, pero eh, son como la sábana, como cierto tipo de, de uno encima de lo otro. ¿Me entiendes? So, aquí tú vas al click and port y entonces aquí tú vas a crear un monitor. El monitor está aquí. Y lo creas aquí en el monitor. Y te va a aparecer este monitor. Y entonces si estos cuatro cables no los tienes. Aquí hay un triángulo. Y en ese triángulo hay una línea. Y tú pones el de, de do control MIDI 1 hasta el 4. Y lo conectas aquí donde está esto. ¿Ok? Ahí mismo. ¿Ves? Y ahí terminaste. Y entonces ya después que terminaste. Pues le das co eh, comando EQ para salvarlo. En el, si eres un keyboard. O le das aquí en save, ¿ok? Ve que ahí tienes el comando save, command in save, ¿ok? So, después que terminas eso, pues ya pues el proyecto, pues boom. Tú lo escuchas, ¿ves? So, ahora con Cubase, se lo voy a explicar en español. Déjame salir de aquí. Ahí escucharon los faders que bajaron, ¿ok? Y si tienen alguna pregunta, pues como le había dicho... Está en muchos los websites, pero como que no explica muy bien y yo como que, tú sabes, estoy, trato de leer mucho al mismo tiempo y es mucha información, so tienen que leer los manuales. Entre leyendo los manuales y viendo los tutoriales en YouTube, pues ya tú sabes, pues ya 
uno puede bregar en esa situación. Pues ahora, si tú quieres abrir, si quieres hacerlo, si quieres que los faders se muevan en tu mixer, tienes que, primero que nada, abrir un proyecto. Yo, por ejemplo, cuando me dejé de llevar del tutorial del alemán de del señor Tomás Milonas, ¿ok? Uh, como él habla alemán y nosotros hablamos entre español e inglés, pues se puede entender más o menos. So, yo prefiero, o sea, hice lo mismo que él hizo, pero creé un empty project, ¿ok? En el empty project o en el proyecto vacío, ¿ok? Voy a, al estudio o en español es lo mismo, estudio. Y voy al estudio eh, cero, ¿ok? En el estudio cero, tú tienes que crear esos cuatro Mackie Control. ¿Ok? Tú los creas aquí. Aquí tú los añades. ¿Ok? Cuando estás creando cada uno, el primero no te va a decir uno. Te va a decir Mackie Control y después Mackie Control 2, Mackie Control 3, Mackie Control 4. Pero esta es la jugada. Al Mackie Control que... No tiene el 1, pero es el 1. Tienes que ponerle 4 aquí. ¿Ok? 4 ahí y 4 acá. ¿Ok? <coughs> lo mismo. Lo mismo con el 2. El 2 es el 3. El 3 es el 2. Y el 4 es el 1. So, el 4 es el 1. El 3 es el 2. El 2 es 3. Y el 1 es 4. ¿Ok? Acuérdense de eso, ¿ok? So, cuando ya tú terminas eso, le das OK. Y entonces vienes a, al, a le das right click aquí, antes que vayas a crear los canales, porque ese fue el error que yo cometí, que fui aquí y lo creé aquí rápido. No, you don't create it there, ahí right away. So, tú vienes aquí y le añades un track, pero ese track le vas a poner... 24 uh, mono ok y le vas a poner a y h para Alan y he y le puedes poner el q u 24 canal ch para canal o chano 01 cuando le añades eso te van a aparecer los 24 canales Aquí a la izquierda. ¿Escucharon los faders cómo se movieron? No sé si lo escucharon, pero ahí estuvieron los faders. So, ya cuando tú creas esos 24 canales, ¿ok? Vas a estudio de nuevo y aprieta F4, ¿ok? O vas a donde dice Audio Connection, ¿ok? Y vas a Inputs. En el Input, ¿ok? Tú le quitas Remove Bus Stereo. Ok, y te va a preguntar para quitarle el estéreo y si lo quieres borrar. Ok, si sí, lo borras. Ok, y entonces vas a añadir 24 canales en mono. Ok, 24 canales en mono, ya está en mono ahí. Mono, y entonces A y H. Ok. IHQU24 Ok CH para canal 01 Lo mismo que hicimos cuando lo, le dimos right click aquí Añadimos el canal físicamente en la pantalla Ahora lo estamos añadiendo como si fuera un bus Ok Y ahí están los 24 canales ¿Ve? Ahora tienes que añadir los tres en estéreo Porque el Aran en GQU24 tiene 24 canales mono y 3 en estéreo. So, cuando vas a añadir los 3 en estéreo, lo mismo. Añades 3 en estéreo, pero tienes que cambiarlo aquí, estéreo. Ok, y entonces pone A, I, H, Q, U, 24. Y entonces, of course, va, oh, vas a poner canal 25 y 26 ok ch para canal 25 y 26 ok 
cuando añades esos bow, automáticamente te va a añadir los otros tres porque ya le diste tres. ¿Ves? Entonces ahora aquí go cambia. Ok. 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Ok. So ahora está 25, 26, 27, 28, 29 y 30. Ok. So aquí tienes los 24 canales en mono, uh, y los tres en estéreo. Entonces en el output. En el output cambias aquí. ¿Ves? Vas y cliqueas aquí. Y vas a 31. Y 32. Como tu stereo output. En stereo output. Le pone A. I H. Q U. 24. O como tú quieras. Y stereo out. Como tú quieras. O, o H N Stereo out para hacerlo más corto. Ok. Stereo output o out. Ok. Y ahí está guardado. No, ahí se quedó. Ok. So ahí los tienes, ¿verdad? Inputs, lo que creamos. Y output, solamente el output que creamos. Ahora tienes que venir y darle aquí. ¿Ve? A cualquiera que tú le des, te va a salir el canal. Ok. Pero para que te salga ese canal, el boss, tienes que añadírselo en el, te dice no boss, pues tienes que añadirle ese boss, ¿ok? So, donde quiera que tú sombreas eso, ahí le vas a poner uno para el canal 2, 2, canal 3, 3, canal 4, 4, hasta que llegues a lo último, ¿ok? So, déjame hacerlo aquí pa más rapidito. 5, 6, canal 7, canal 7. Canal 8, canal 8. Canal 9, canal 9. Canal 10, canal 10. Canal 11. 12. 13. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23 y 24. Ok. So ahora que tienes desde el 1 hasta el 24. 24, 23, 22. Siempre hay que chequearlo dos veces para no cometer el error dos veces. A mí siempre me decían, tienes que chequear dos y tres veces para estar seguro que todo esté bien. 14, 15, no tengo no, no, espérate. 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Ahora, físicamente en el mixer. Y estamos hablando entre el mixer y lo que ves en la pantalla. Voy a, 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 a darle solo a los canales, a cada uno. Es como si estuviera haciendo un solo para escuchar cada instrumento. ¿Ves el solo? Si estuvieras escuchando cada instrumento. ¿Ves? Como si fuera solo. ¿Ves? Y si lo quieren mutear, pues mute. ¿Ves cómo salen los mutes? Ahí están todos los mutes. ¿Ves? So, los pasos que el señor Tomás Milonas explicó están bastante bien. Pero era para un mixer de 16 canales. Este es de 24. 
So, para mí funcionó lo que le estaba aplicando. Tuve que meterme un poquito más al libro porque son 24 canales, pero tuve que como que tuitearlo un poco. Ok. So, lo más importante es esto. En el mixer, ok. O course. O cuando uno mueve el mixer, no sé si lo escuchan. Ahí lo escuchan, ¿verdad? So, cada fader se está moviendo por su propia cuenta cuando lo muevo en el mixer aquí. Pero les quiero advertir que en el mixer físicamente, los botones que dicen select, antes de tu mover, si tú vas a mover físicamente el fader con tu mano, primero tienes que darle al canal select en el mixer al canal que vas a mover. Porque si tratas de mover los otros canales y no le diste select al, al, al canal correspondiente, pues vas a sentir que el fader está bien duro y parece como si lo fueras a partir o si lo fueras a romper. Automáticamente, si no has seleccionado el canal y mueves el fader que no has seleccionado el canal, va a estar medio duro, pero después lo vas a poder mover. Pero no es como Logic Pro X, que cuando estás uh, haciendo tu tu mixeo con cada fader ok, tú lo puedes mover hacia arriba y hacia abajo todo al mismo tiempo sin darle select al mixer, mixer físicamente y los puedes mover en Cubase no bueno, por ahora no a menos que haya algún otro truco que alguien sepa pero automáticamente cada fader automa tú tienes que físicamente darle si vas a estar mixeando desde el mixer mixer que en verdad no veo el por qué tienes que hacerlo si para eso está la tecnología mejor lo mueves aquí en el, en el, en el mixer cada uno y mira lo puedo mover cada uno sin ningún tipo de problema so, esto concluye mi tutorial de hoy Voy a hacer más research porque de verdad Cubase ahora es que estoy empezando en Cubase, ok. So, pero por lo menos ese tutorial me sirvió y leyendo los libros también. So, si tienen alguna pregunta, por favor me pueden uh, enviar un mensaje a DJ Chepo Music uh, en Facebook, en Instagram. Y ya tú sabes, me le dan like al video. Gracias por apoyarme. Voy a empezar a hacer muchos videos y tutoriales porque me gusta esto y esto es lo que yo hago como parte de mi terapia para controlar el PTSD. El que estuvo en la guerra sabe lo que estoy hablando. So, this is my, this is my uh, video tutorial for today. All right, guys, I do this because of my PTSD. So, you know, whoever went to war understand, uh, understand that this is a good therapy for coping mechanisms. So... This this is conclude my tutorial. You got any questions? Please feel free to contact me. Give me thumbs like if you like the video the video, and uh, please be respectful. I'll be respectful too, even though sometimes I like to joke around. But this is the only way I was able to move the faders on the on the on the software and be able and be able to actually move on the mixer. Okay. So I wish you, I wish Cubase would have a better way to actually set it up, but I, I actually wasn't that hard after reading the books and watching the tutorial. Still, is a lot of more that I had to learn from Cubase Pro because I just got a new. I'm, I'm, I, I am more expert in Logi Pro X, but uh, I like, like I say, I like to have all the softwares, all the DAWs in case of a client come with the, uh, a project. And is 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 made of in Ableton, or is made of in Cubase, or is made of in Logi Pro X. Of course, I try to go with a more economical uh, software. Studio One, they say, is pretty good too. Uh, I will get it eventually too. But what I like the most is that you get free updates, just like FL Studio. Well, at least some of these softwares do. Pro Tools, oh man, I don't like Pro Tools. Pro Tools is overrated. They try to do like Adobe and pay a membership $500 a year. I mean, whoever is trying to end up be in the coma can't afford that, okay? I guess they're just thinking about people who are like, can't spend millions of dollars, but 
like a lot of people who try to make a come up or try or just beginners i'm a seasoner i'm not a beginner i'm like pretty seasoned in this and i've been doing a lot of records already since the 1990s and i we used to use different kind of technology everything was analog and whoever is old school we understand okay so like i say sharing is caring si usted quiere compartir también su información pues puede hacerlo porque para esto estamos okay so thank you for watching the video and already click like and thank you i appreciate it bye